welcome to this episode of Ask Aviel. My name is Aviel. It is my pleasure to share with you what I have discovered in my walk so that we can learn and grow together. Today, I would like to talk about having an unforgiving spirit, hatred and bitterness. In Esther chapter 3, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman, son of Hamadatta, the Agagite, elevating him and setting his chair above all the officials who were with him. All the king's servants who were at the king's gate bowed down and paid honour to Haman, for the king had commanded it. But Mordecai would not bow down or pay him honour. When Haman saw that Mordecai was not bowing down or paying him honour, Haman was filled with rage. But it was insufficient in his eyes to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had told him the identity of Mordecai's people. So Haman sought to destroy all the Jews, the people of Mordecai, who were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus. The evil Haman said to King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered and dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of your kingdom, whose laws differ from those of every other people, and who do not obey the king's laws. It is not in the king's interest to tolerate them. If it pleases the king, let an edict be written to destroy them. I will pay 10,000 talents of silver into the hands of those who carry out this business to put it into the king's treasuries. There is the parable of the unforgiving servant who owed the king 10,000 talents of silver in Matthew 18 verses 23 to 34. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved, and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt, because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry, and delivered him to the torturers, until he should pay all that was due to him. The unforgiving servant is parallel to Haman being unforgiving towards Mordecai for not bowing down to him. Haman wanted to be worshipped like God. He was filled with hot anger because Mordecai refused to worship him. Haman made himself as God, wanting men to bow before him, but Mordecai would neither kneel nor prostrate himself before Haman. The word used for bow down is a specific word for worship towards God alone. Mordecai said that he would never prostrate himself because he was a Jew, one who gives thanks and praise only unto God. 
Mordecai stood firm and held to the principle that bowing before a man in that manner of prostrating himself to the ground was only reserved for the worship of God. He admonished others against idolatry. Mordecai's refusal to kneel and bow to Haman was also a political statement. He was refusing to accept Haman's authority. Instead of going to King Ahasuerus and highlighting that Mordecai had disobeyed the king's command, Haman took on a different, unexpected route. Haman was manipulative with his words. Instead of Haman being the one to endanger the king by trying to become royalty and expecting people to bow down and worship him as if he were the king, Haman accused Mordecai and his people of endangering the king by their non-conforming laws and practices. Haman spread slanderous lies against the Jewish people in all of the 127 provinces that King Ahasuerus ruled over. Haman said that the Jews did not obey the king's decrees. This was a half-truth. The Jews certainly only obeyed God. If King Ahasuerus' laws were against the commands of God, surely the Jews would not obey those decrees in question. Haman instigated the king that there was no profit to let the Jews live. The king should not tolerate them but destroy them completely. While Haman may have in mind Mordecai's refusal to bow to him as disobedience to the king's command, he made a broad statement about all the Jews which was unfair. When Mordecai refused to bow to Haman, Haman decided that he would retaliate against all the Jews that lived throughout the Persian Empire. Haman decided to take revenge not on Mordecai the individual but on the entire Jewish people. He didn't want to only lay hands on Mordecai alone. Haman plotted to destroy all the Jews throughout the kingdom of Ahasuerus. It was the murder of an entire people group. Haman was so vindictive and vengeful that he not only wanted to kill Mordecai, but also to wipe out the entire race of God's people. In the end, Haman was hanged on a gallows 50 cubits high, standing next to his own house. Haman had prepared it for Mordecai, but in the end, the king ordered for Haman to be hanged on it instead. Haman's ten sons were also hanged on the gallows. King Ahasuerus gave Queen Esther the estate of Haman. Esther then appointed Mordecai over Haman's estate. The king took off his signet ring, which he had taken back from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. If there is someone who has hurt us, we release them into God's hand and God himself will deal with that person in his own way and in his own time. Hebrews 12, 14-15 says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. In the end, just like the unforgiving servant and Haman, those who are filled with revenge, hatred and bitterness will be destroyed together with their family. Let that sink into our spirits. Thank you for joining me. I pray that this message inspires and challenges you. God bless you and your family. Shalom.